So tonight I'm going to be talking about building real-time web, uh, real-time applications. Um, I'm going to talk about why you know why it's a good thing to build real-time into apps, how you can build them, some of the issues we've found in building them. Um, but mostly, I want to just inspire, like I want to inspire the concept of real time um, when you when you're thinking about your apps and how they communicate. But first, I'll just give some context. Uh, that's not meant to pop up yet, but we'll, we'll, I'll talk about that later. <laughs> It'll pop pop up throughout the presentation, but it's part of the real time kind of thing. So I work at um, Inlight Media. We're a, a software development company based out of the heart of. Uh, Collingwood um, in the World Wide Warehouse. Um, we're not, we haven't filled that whole space yet. We're in that very far um, corner, but we're, um, we're growing. So we build web apps um, and iPhone apps. Um, so this kind of has a, uh, it's an interesting kind of um, relationship, building both of these internally um, to kind of, it really kind of makes you think about that communication flow between those two things. And we've been researching real time, so we've got a few, um, few apps where it's real time communication has has been an important factor. So native apps, are, I, I should explain what that thing popping up is. So every yeah, every time um, someone installs um, one of our apps, that's going to pop up, um, every, and and as a count, so that's someone downloading the app, running it, and that will pop up. So native apps. Um, <laughs> native apps are meant to be fast. Like you, you want your you apps. Apps are like the, the reason why a lot of um, us develop native apps and why people enjoy using the apps that we build is uh, when they're fast. Um, they're meant to be in, interactive, like the app we just um, saw from um, in the Universal with the 3D. Like the 3D, you want you want to be able to participate with your app and you know communicate two way with it. Um, and animations play a key part in this. Like you know, your, your animations um, in that in the apps kind of uh, dr like draw users in. Users may, may may not notice why they like an app, but a lot of the time, those kind of little UI animations um, make a big difference. So um, one of the um, path was like a great great one that just does little UI animations um, throughout their whole app, um, and to make it uh, really an interactive experience. The problem is these animations and this fast and the speed is you know all let down by mobile networks or you know the the communication over um, mobile or even you know Wi-Fi you know you want to try and um, it's kind of the it's the area that we can't you know control as much as we can control the animations. So mobile networks you know they they need light lightweight um, transmission you want to be able to uh, you know connect and and have as minimum amount of um, Kind of communication overhead as possible. Um, uh, sorry, small and small data packets. You want to send things down in a small way and and communicate like only the minimum amount. Particularly on like an iPhone on mobile app applications, this is really important. Um, so apps using real time. Uh, so I'm not sure if anyone from Sports Mates here tonight, but they. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Sportsmate um, builds a whole bunch of uh, sport sports out there, just based in Melbourne. Um, and one of them, say Footy Live. Um, you can. I'm just going to pop over here. Like for instance, this is kind of indicating um, that they've got a real time connection. Um, uh, and and this is one that you know when the scores update, they sh they show up here. Um, Status board came out by Panic um, the yesterday, I think it was. Um, and so, this like this is a really interesting app, like interesting in terms of that they got widgets past um, Apple, but you know that's fine. Um, but it's a, like status boards are a, a really good thing to have, and the, you know they're about delivering real time communication, so you can monitor, you know, monitor the state of your your, your apps, your projects, and 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 do it in real time. I was actually chatting to um, someone last night. Um, at the Melbourne JavaScript meetup, um, who's built Mojo? I'm not sure if he's here tonight, Anthony. Um, but Mojo is a um, is actually using uh, real time um, here. When, whenever someone kind of opens this app and they want to share an experience about a certain place, uh, they'll pop up. Um, sorry, they'll pop up uh, down the side, and and that will update in real time. Um, 
you know, like like just looking at apps like you know Xbox Smart Glass is like one where you know that kind of you, it's a way to control your Xbox connects to the server and then connects back down to your Xbox. Um, and the one that we've been um, building is called Draft Pick. Um, and so that's that thing popping up is when someone's installing Draft Pick, and because the football, um, I think the teams would have just switched over um, to why there's a bit more activity. So I'm just going to jump um, over here. So what we want to do is when the scores um, update on, t on the TV, we'll update um, these. The user's gameplay, so the user can play a game um, like answering trivia, um, submitting a halftime poll, choosing who they think will. Um, win the game and kick the first goal and stuff. Um, but all this like needs to operate in real time. And this is why we really were researching re um, real time communications. Um, and the, the big one, like, you know, iMessage, like this little kind of um, pop up down the bottom. You know, this is, this is uh, love it or hate it as part of the new iMessage. It it's, you know, shows when someone's typing back to you. Um, and that kind of, that happens in real time. You can see if you have to the two phones together and, um, and you know, start typing, you'll see that happen immediately. So how do you achieve real time? Um, a lot of the time, polling is the default solution. So uh, basically, it's the equivalent of going, hey, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And the server will go, you know, no, no, yes, we're finally here. So you, it's um, a common implementation. It's slow and inefficient. Like, you, you're making all these kind of um, redundant requests over and over. like. Um, trying to figure out the status, it's all that one-way communication in, 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 um, in getting there. But the thing is, it does get you pretty far. There was an interesting um, talk by Kevin O'Neill from PlayUp um, the other week. And, and, you know, th and they've, got, they've got really far with this um, polling mechanism. Um, push notifications is another way a lot of apps achieve real-time kind of communication. So you can um, send a you know, Apple push notification to, to a device. And, and if the app's open, you can you know, uh, activate something in the app. Otherwise, it will show a message. So it's all right in some places. But the problem is with that presentation, you send a push notification. And if they don't have the app open, then it's got to display, actually, you know, the message. Um, and sometimes you don't, you don't like say the score updating in draft pick. We don't want to every time the score update to send them a push notification. Um, so that's why it's kind of a bit restrictive there. And so this this is where we landed with sockets and specifically web sockets um, because of the web application side of things. But um, and this is this is a great kind of solution uh, for achieving real time. So web sockets, you have a so web sockets is basically you have a constant connection. Um, uh, with the server, it, it, it persists like as long as the app is open, um, that connection is there. And when it you know, minimizes, when you minimize the app, it, it disconnects. But when you open it again, it resumes. Um, and for, when having this open connection, the server can actually push you data um, and tell you when you know when you ac actually are there. Now you know you don't have to keep asking it, "Are we there yet?" Um, so that kind of two-way communication is really key. And this works on web, desktop, and mobile. Uh, so the services available for this, um, you might have seen, that should be a bit higher up, but you might have seen PubNub is one. It allows, it has a whole bunch of libraries that, um, that achieve this kind of, uh, use sockets and to achieve real time. Pusher is another one. Um, so you can install these in your app. But this is um, one that I've, I've built uh, to, to solve the problem. This is what we're using for draft pick. Um, and, and internally as well for other app applications. So Hatchet.io is a homebrew implementation. Um, it's, you know, it doesn't, it's open source, it's on GitHub, it's not um, a paid service uh, such as other ones. Um, it has code for the server um, and client code um, that works on Mac, iOS, and the web. Um, and it supports channels and tokens, which I'll talk about in a, in a moment. But basically, that's um, so you can kind of namespace your events and to secure things um, with via tokens. Um, <coughs> so this is some code um, on implementing Hatchet. Um, so you have a, so it's based on the kind of a pub publisher subscriber model with a hub, um, a like a centralized hub. So a subscriber can connect. A subs you, know, you initialize a subscriber, you set the delegate. Um, 
and then you, you connect to the demo channel. So this is just a demonstration, and you pass it a secret token. So that's a very weak secret token. Usually it's, a, uh, it's about a 50 character string. Um, but for demonstration purposes, you know, I did that. And then we can watch for score update events. And whenever a score update um, event come, gets pushed to um, our phone, we can, we can do something. So now we're doing something really boring, just logging out that event. But the event um, you know, has a name and the data attached. So you can actually use this. Usually, we've been doing the publisher um, is the server, but you can actually implement a publisher on, this, on the same iPhone apps so that people can actually do, for instance, a chat client. So you can have publishers and subscribers, two different um, channels uh, you know, communicating with each other. So here, um, it's the same thing, auth, but a different token, um, this time for the publisher. And you know, sending through the score, I omitted um, Melbourne's score in there because uh, I thought that might be a touchy subject. <laughs> All right, so demo time. Pull out your phones and visit hatch.io demo slash demo. How does it scale we'll find out? Yep, you'll find out. So as people are joining, it should be updating in real time as you're writing your name in, your Twitter username. Um, yeah, so the iPhone app on the side's a bit rougher implementation than the web one. You can't keep doing it there. Just hack that together this afternoon. Um, but yeah, so, so this is, you know, hopefully like as you're pushing, you know, enter, it's going through. Um, you know, what do you build most? You can submit that poll. So it looks like iOS development is, you know, big in Cocoa Heads. Um, and yeah, and this is all um, happening with, and this is all happening over my, like, I'm just tethering at the moment, so all these kind of things are coming through, like, that's, that's not a, an issue there. Um, and you should get an event log at the bottom of your phone, so you're seeing everyone else's events, um, like joining and stuff. I can reset the poll, and hopefully everyone's screen kind of updated then, and you can kind of re-answer it. Cool. All right, so I'll move on. So Hatchet.io, um, so this is kind of the, this is the project page for Hatchet.io. Um, you've, you've got, um, so we do it, like I do a lot of JavaScript development. We do Node.js servers at work. Um, and so this has kind of been, a, uh, that's been the focus between the Node, um, Node.js, um, which is JavaScript on the server side, and then JavaScript on the front end here. Um, and then there's the Objective-C kind of example. So you can, at the moment, we're just all using um, the domain name api.hatchet.io, which is, that, that's just a test domain. Um, you, you know, you, I wouldn't use this in production at all. Um, it's just running off a micro instance on Amazon. Um, but that being said, in terms of the scaling question, um, which I'll probably address a bit later as well, the, like we've done testing with um, micro instances having about 5,000 simultaneous connections to it, um, and that's not been a problem, pushing maybe a message every um, five to 10 seconds to all those clients. So, um, so yeah, so if you wanted to get started with this um, in your project, I guess is probably the most interesting thing. You can create a channel, so I'll create one, um, you know, called Cocoa Heads. And you get given um, your channel name, the API token is basically your password for this um, management section. Um, so you basically want to keep that private, not projected on the screen. Um, and then you've got publisher and subscriber tokens. So these, so if I just, um, so I'm just going to put the API token in here, and I can view these tokens again. So at any stage, I can view what tokens are out there. So these, these two publisher and subscribers have access to sending and receiving any event that goes through the system. So when you are, um, when you are submitting here, you know, these are different events, such as a, identifying yourself on um, uh, your Twitter username was called user-identify. Um, Submitting the poll was submit poll. So, so these ones have access to everything. But you might, on, on particularly on the web, you, you um, you, you, these tokens aren't 
um, private, like so anyone can just view the source um, and see your token. So on a web app, you'd probably want to create a subscriber token that only has access to certain um, events. Um, so you can just do that here. You can say um, cuckoo heads, paste the token. And I might just say, oh, so this is for a publisher, but this, let's say they can only publish user sign up. Um, and so that, that's a new token for that. Um, further down the page, you can remove those tokens. Um, and, and then finally, you can delete the channel at the bottom if, you, if you're done testing, basically. Or, so it's, it's on GitHub. Um, there's actually an Amazon AMI image um, available. Um, it take, and there's a screencast here. So, I'd re like, so Amazon, AM, if it, anyone's um, familiar with Amazon, um, basically an AMI image is like an ISO image. It's pre-built. Um, and you can install this, and it's a single server instance, so it's not it's not good for scaling, but it's it's good enough if you have an app that maybe only has you know three thousand to five thousand simultaneous connections, which you know even draft pick at any one stage there during a game is probably about a thousand connections. So um, you you know you can you get get pretty far with a single micro instance. Um, and it takes about four minutes to kind of get that going, so that's it's it's pretty fast. Um, so I'll continue. Oh, sorry. I just um, when you when you build that micro instance, something. Uh, sorry, when you build that instance, you can use this. You can change the domain name to the domain name that you build here, so you can manage all your tokens there. Um, Did you use a tool to create this documentation? Is it hand rolled? Uh, hand rolled. Yep. That's cool. Um, all right, so I'll get back to the presentation. Um, all right. So this is exciting, basically. Like real-time communication is an exciting thing, and and a lot of the time it's like there's been a barrier, like a kind of a barrier to entry to this. It's a, you know, you, you your default tool is like the AF networking library, so you can just make requests and. Um, and that and that's fine. Like that's that's it's it's definitely real time has its place, but there's apps that you could use this as a kind of support, like a support item next to your app. You know, say it goes down, which you know, like because it is 0 0.0.1 for Hatchet. Um, uh, you know, say it goes down, like at least your you know your application is is just made more interactive by having it there. It's a value add. So we're kind of trying to you know panic stall. Uh, you know, stole our thunder. No, we, um, we're trying to put together, you know, a dashboard just internally, um, so like that we can see when users sign up. So rather than you know the the kid popping up down the bottom, we'll see the numbers kind of pop up, and um, we want to integrate. I tried asking App Annie for um, an API for their kind of uh, the app rankings, but we might um, just roll something ourselves. Um, and when kind of the servers, you know, if the servers have issues as well, so I'll just um, so for instance with Draft. Um, you know, during this presentation, there's been those 60 installs, 204 games created. So this kind of monitoring um, is really important. Our log files all get our log events. If there's an error warning or an uncaught exception, get sent by by Hatchet to to so we can monitor it basically. Um, so analytics is a is a key one. So like you know, it, it is just cool seeing when so people install your app um, or you know do something in your app and that you, you might need to um, monitor basically. Uh, so battery life is a is a question. I'm not sure if Stephen's here. Stephen, um, but so I gave a similar presentation to this um, at Melbourne JavaScript last night, um, and one of the questions um, Stephen asked was you know battery life because the you know. People are used to the, the request model and you know how do sockets kind of fare, having this open connection all the time. Um, so I ran some tests a day uh, in between kind of client work. Um, and so the, here it's, um, here we got the, uh, the, the time that was recorded when the battery was at a certain percent. So I didn't, until I started testing, I didn't realize that the battery level, I'm not sure if you can access something more granular than um, the kind of five, every 5% five interval with the battery level dropping down. But um, basically, every 22 minutes when polling, so, so I was polling every 2.5 seconds to a small JSON payload. 
um, the battery would go down 5% about every 22 minutes. And with sockets, I was sending a message to the phone um, every 2.5 seconds. Um, and it was, a, you know, they, they're basically comparable battery life. So, uh, like, look, these stats, you yeah, know, they need to be taken with a bit of grain of salt because that's, they, well, no, they need more testing, basically. Like, that's probably just the screen, you know. The, your, um, your interval's pretty short. Yeah. You're not giving enough time for the radio to power down. Oh, uh, okay. So, um, yeah, you're not going to get any difference. Right, okay. But if you had a much larger interval on the polling. On the polling. sending a message, you'll probably find that you're holding up an open connection or drain the battery faster. Okay, all right. Well, that, yeah. So, yeah, so the, well, the socket connection's only open for the life of the person with the f like phone open. Um, uh, so yeah, yeah, that, that is something to obviously be aware of. With with draft pick, we get, um, you know, we it actually helped us to scale. For instance, that's another way as well is that our application servers are much lighter weight, um, you know, and we didn't have to build up that infrastructure because, you know, we didn't have to poll every five seconds. And, and when scores happen on TV, they happen immediately. So. You know, check out the battery life and, and um, commit to the uh, project on GitHub um, with some more stats would be great. So where now, like, you know, now that we've heard about real time, you know, what's, what's, what's next? Um, so obviously the Amazon AMI image, you know, grab that and just play around with it. Like it's, um, watch the screencast, it's, you know, I didn't talk in it or anything like that. So you kind of have to just um, watch a boring screencast for four minutes. But, um, and have fun with real, real time, like basically the, you know, coming out of this, it's not about using product X or product Y. It's not about using Pusher, PubNub, Hatchet. It's basically, you know, have fun and think about real time in your app, in the next app that you're looking at. You know, maybe there's a chance for some kind of real time activity, like, um, you know, activity streams when people are kind of interacting with the app. Real time conf is um, just something I noticed, I found, you know, found it yesterday, um, which I'd be keen to go to this year, but basically, Check out this website, it's um, 2011.realtimeconf. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, so it's a few years ago. But um, all, all the um, videos are here that you can um, watch and kind of, a lot of them are kind of web-based, but like, you know, the web, you know, we're dealing with the web um, in our mobile applications. So, you know, it, it's a really interesting space, this real time. I really think it's, you know, the next kind of where we're, you know, the next, um, step that we kind of need to get to like there's you know reasons why they're building the MBN and to now like also to allow these kind of communications to develop so thank you is there any questions yep uh, what were your big motivations in building this over using yeah um so when we start, when we did draft pick last year, um, we did, we weren't aware of PubNub and Pusher then. Um, uh, we did, we'd done a lot of, um, so so basically Hatchet.io is built off a Node.js library called Socket.io. Um, it's a, just a, a basically a wrapper around that um, to give you the channels and tokens. Um, and so we'd, we'd done a lot of stuff with that. So when we thought real time, we could just we just we just picked that tool up straight away. Um, so PubNub and Pusher, um, from what I can tell, look like really good apps um, for small app uh, services. Sorry, for small apps though, they're quite pricey. Um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just pop over to, I just bring it up out of interest. Um, should have gone straight to the pricing page, but yeah, they, they, I think they start um, started about fifty dollars of no fifteen dollars. So for for hundred connections, so if you wanted that real time to you. Um, to an app, Peak Connections. Just look at Peak Connections, um, the description they give of that because it's a device per day counts as a unique connection or something. It's not, not having 100 people connected all at once, um, I think. You know, that's, that's how I read it. It was kind of a bit long. Um, but yeah, so for you know, draft, like, look, you know, for Peak Connections, you know, we probably could have, we, we were expecting maybe bigger demand there and so maybe we thought maybe this price, but like the, we're running, we're running it off two micro instances. Like, is enough for you know? Um, it's just an interesting space. Micro in, um, about fifteen dollars a month. Although if so, hatch. Although Hatchet IO is running off. If you look at spot instances, so if it's something that's not important and the server can go down at any stage, you can basically pay 
$2 a month that Spot Instance uses up the extra bandwidth on extra resourcing power, resource power on the Amazon network. And um, you basically pay like a fifth of the price to, to run something. So you, if you want to live dangerously, you can do that. Yeah. Uh, do it. Sorry. How are you doing with um, dropouts and reconnects? Yep. So um, like uh, the Socket.io library is is a wrapper around um, web sockets. Um, and and Socket.io is actually re really interesting on the web is it provides multiple fallbacks um, if, for instance, it can't establish a web socket. Um, one of those, the last being Flash, which you want, don't want to get to. But it 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 has the kind of protocols around reconnects and, and disconnects. So, yeah, so um, I'll kick open. I mean, but Hocker, um, the hatchet is running on the device, right? Yeah, so I'll just show. Um, I'll get out of presentation mode and get into Xcode. Um, just so you can kind of see the code. Um, so this is the this is for instance the code that you just you know so like don't judge me on the code too much. But um for that that app. But if you look over um, here is the hatchet the hatchet library um, and you've got the publisher subscriber, but under support um, You've got the async um, library web socket JSON kit. Um, socket IO li client library is one that um, we've written uh, based on Fred Potter's you know work. So that's you know, yeah. when I say we've written, it's a it's a collabor um, you know, It's kind of we've taken what he's done and, and worked it. Um, so yeah, you've got things like when um, you know try again on reconnect and and, and um, heartbeats and things like that. So it, it kind of all handles it there. Um, yeah. Let's just lay it on top of CF networking, is it? So that goes on top of the web socket, which the web socket's on top of the async socket, which is probably on top of something CF networking. Yeah. Uh, like in terms of like frameworks, that, yeah, yeah, CF, CF network, and so they're probably only, <laughs> the only framework there that was needed for that. Yep. The term real time has a very specific meaning, um, which this doesn't really cover. Do you have any issues with? Mixing up the terminology. What in what way do you mean? Well, real time is you know specifically if someone was looking for like a real time program, they're looking for someone that that is working on embedded systems or software that has to perform within um, certain guaranteed yep. time constraints. Right. So, I guess the difference, like I guess, if you're polling, for instance, for instance, you, you even if you're polling every second, you wouldn't be achieving real time. Traditional real time. Programming is about you know you're writing a, a sensor reader which is got yep. or, I mean, classic examples also games programming on consoles and stuff like that they have to you have to render a frame in 13 milliseconds. Yeah. Like, you can't not. Right. Whereas real time, Having you're a talking real time more about push I guess about real time yeah. communication real time, real time messaging and the yeah. fact that it's more it's very loose. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. That's doing. valid. Um. Yeah. So I guess uh, the yeah. The definition of real time going by with this is yeah is is that the server tells you you know this or the, something else tells you that something's ready rather than you asking and and never, like it's trying to deliver it to you I guess as fast as it can it, it doesn't guarantee that it's going to, uh, particularly with hatchet you know it it, it it's actually sending things um, it's like send and forget like it doesn't it doesn't check out did it actually get to that person or not so um, yeah yeah it is volatile in that sense yep so the AFL rings you on mid-September and says we're going to massively promote you. Yeah. You apart after the after the big drinking session to celebrate. Yeah. How far do you you know they, they say we're going to have half a million users. Can yeah. You yeah. Talk to your service. How, how do you think you'll scale? Yeah. So um, half a half a million users that would be um, quite a lot. But uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so 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 the thing about um, the Hatchet IO lab layer around Socket IO is Socket IO is kind of all in memory. It all holds um, it holds your connections in memory, so you can't really distribute it between servers um, easily. And so they have a few stores, um, and one of the one of the ones we're kind of implementing there is a Redis store. Um, so uh, we can have a until Redis gets kind of clustering, that it's still going to be a single machine. So a single high-powered, so Redis is a kind of the database that's very simple. Um, uh, well, simple in its use, but probably very complicated underneath. Um, and we can have maybe 10, 50 servers that connect and kind of go through. They do a bit of a pub sub through there. It, it, it should scale. Like I've, 
I've, yeah. I've tested it like to 20,000 kind of thing, but I haven't tested that far. But um, just because we haven't had the um, need just yet, but yeah, yeah.